All right, we are back with a new video, and today we will be updating the power rankings once again following week seven or episode 18 of Australian Survivor Blood vs. Water. And again, this is a pretty straightforward week in terms of contenders. And like, I'm not going to waste too much time with this video, but I thought I'd just give an update on what's happened in the game since then. But without further ado, let's get right into the list. So, starting things off at number 10, we technically have the only person that was eliminated from this past week, and here we have Michelle. And I'll say up front that the whole whole purgatory twist worked out in a pretty weird way where pretty obvious I mean obviously with this being Australian Survivor and them needing non-elimination rounds I was expecting there to be around two non-elimination rounds in the post merge and what I didn't expect was for them to have purgatory build up to four people and then have three of them come back into the game essentially taking three episodes to eliminate one person but here we have Michelle and it's not too surprising that Michelle went out here now I was a bit surprised at first that they weren't going to try to treat Michelle as a swing vote going to this tribal especially with Dave presenting himself as a bit more suspicious and with the couples realizing that it's not quite time to flip on each other just yet however by the end it wasn't too surprising that Michelle went home here and like I said I feel like she was largely invisible in the show during the pre-merge she was shown as being a bit of a loyal number to Sandra but then after Sandra goes she sort of falls into the background she pretty much stays at the bottom for most of the rest of the game either being a direct target or through Mel being a target and even after Mel went out I mean she still wasn't really in the core of things now she did get some confessionals here and there however I never really saw her as a top contender it's not too surprising that she went out here especially with the purgatory challenge with her being against some other more capable competitors and Jordy, Shale, and KJ so because of that it's not too surprising she goes out here and she's here at number 10 and with that we are now moving to the nine people still in the game and like I said I'll be ranking them based on how likely I think it is that they'll win from this point and admittedly this is a mostly boring list as I feel like most of these people have zero shot of winning in my personal opinion but at number nine we have Jordan and again what is there to say about Jordan now admittedly he's not in the worst position in the world like with him being a part of the couples alliance with Josh Mark and Sam however I have a strong feeling that he is going to be one of the people uh, to be booted in the next couple episodes if a couple of alliance is targeted I could very well see Jordan going out either due to him being uh, as a way of weakening Josh or more likely as an idol play if I'm being perfectly honest and again he's gotten virtually no content to this point I mean or at least in the last two episodes you know and I just feel like he is quite expendable he's the, probably the most expendable person in the couples alliance despite not being the most threatening even though I feel like Josh is a bigger threat I feel like his relationship to Mark Mark is probably what's going to save him over Jordan. So because of that, I have Jordan here at number nine. Now we're moving on to number eight and we have the person who was at the bottom of last week's rankings we have David and yeah I decided to move David up a spot mainly because he got more screen time and while he was seen as a potential target going to the round he still got a bit more space to talk about his spots going to the round and really the last three episodes really he definitely was presented as a potential swing vote someone who factored into the actual decisions being made however he's still in a pretty bad position gameplay wise he is one of these singles and while I think he could be a swing vote come the actual final seven assuming the couples are effective in getting out Jordy I still don't feel great about David he is someone who people don't seem to trust we definitely saw that reflected in the confessionals where people talk about wanting to get rid of him due to that so that's not a great look at the end of the day and because of that I have David here at number eight now we're moving on to number seven and we actually have one of the people that returned to the game and here we have KJ and again it's sort of surprising to see KJ being voted out here it's sort of interesting how there was a double tribal in the previous episode where obviously we saw Jordy being voted out first we saw her sort of being aligned with KJ and Jordy to an extent but that was sort of an interesting dynamic there there. and really we saw the storyline of KJ infiltrating the guys alliance really amount to nothing where we see her talking about how KJ and her like are sort of together and which sort of implies that they would be voted out back to back and obviously we saw that play out where Jordy was voted out first and then immediately after she was seen as the next most expendable person it was voted out as a result now she does earn her way back into game through purgatory however even then I feel like she didn't get that much to prop her up and I feel like even if 
if she gets to the end, it'll be a very tough case for her to win a jury vote, considering she has already been voted out. And even beyond that, she doesn't seem to be that influential in the game. So I feel like there are definitely knocks against her. She's coming back into the game in a pretty tough position where obviously Jordy is the biggest target on the board. However, if he ends up winning immunity, then I could definitely see her being a potential target there. There are still some options for her to infiltrate the couple's alliance even so. However, I'm not feeling too great about it. I think a lot of focus will be placed on the couple's alliance, trying to take out their big threats before turning on each other. And I fear that KJ will be taken up before that. However, if she is able to survive a couple more rounds, maybe get through the Jordy vote all right, then I feel like she could be a swing vote when the couples do turn on each other. So I think that's something in her favor, but still not looking great for her even if she gets to the end. And because of that, I have her here at number seven. Now we're moving on to number six and we have someone pretty similar to KJ and they've also returned to the game after being voted out. We have Shayel and similar to KJ, I'm not feeling too great about Shayel either. However, the main reason I have her above KJ is that yes, on one hand, I think Shayel is more likely to be voted out sooner than KJ. I think people are looking at her as a bigger threat. However, even so, I think the edit has been propping up Shayel slightly more than KJ during her time of purgatory. But even beyond that, I think Shayel has slightly more win equity than KJ if she were to somehow get to the end in the sense that she has been an underdog for longer in the game. She's been seen as a target for longer in the game. And I think through that, people might respect that more even after Shale was voted out. However, at the end of the day, I don't think she's actually going to get to the end. I feel like she's someone who might win an immunity or two, but I feel like as soon as Jordy is out, she's the next biggest target. People will want to get her out to prevent her from making that deep of a run. So I'm not feeling great about Shale either, but it's the better edit and the better wing equity if she were somehow to win out that keeps her above KJ at number six. Now we're moving on to number five. And again, we're sticking in a similar ballpark here. We have Chrissy. And again, Chrissy's a bit more insulated. I feel like of the singles that are still in the game, she's probably in the best position to get towards the final five. However, again, she would be going to the final five at the bottom in a position where she'd probably be voted out. Mind you, I think the couples are going to turn on each other anyway before that point. But even so, I'm not feeling too great about Chrissy. It doesn't seem like anyone actually wants to take her to the end. And beyond that, I feel like her edit has largely dried up to, up to this point. So because of that, I have her here at number five. Now we're moving on to number four. And this person is solely this high due to their gameplay. But even then, I feel like they're not in the best position to win. And here we have Josh. Now to Josh's credit, he does have a bit more going on in the edit. I feel like this last episode was pretty good for him in terms of hanging and confessionals. And it was sort of good on him that he wasn't being targeted. Now, obviously we see him come up with the plan to get rid of one of the idols between Mark and Sam without actually going after them. And I thought that was a pretty interesting move. Now, obviously a lot of that was motivated by them knowing about purgatory and they didn't want to turn on the couples too soon only to have one of them come back into the game anyway. So I think I understand the move pretty well. And it's good on Josh that he recognizes that he is going to have to flip on Mark and Sam at this point, try to take that shot. However, at the end of the day, I'm still not feeling great about Josh. I feel like he will ultimately lose this battle. And while Jordan is more likely to go home before Josh, once that flip happens, I feel like Josh is still going to be taken out sooner rather than later. However, it's largely his gameplay and his most recent episode where it got a pretty good showing. That's what's keeping him above these other contenders. But at the end of the day, I don't think he's winning. He's here at number four. Now we're moving on to number three. And we have the three people I think have the most realistic shots of winning the game. But on number three, we have the least lucky of those three. We have Jordy. And again, it's sort of interesting to have Jordy at number three, especially after he was voted out and had to come back into the game. But yeah, I mean, I think Jordy is the most logical resistance to Mark and Sam at this point. We saw him really try to take a shot at them during the last couple of rounds with the idol, got voted out in the process, which I think was the correct move for the couple's alliance. But obviously he comes back into the game and I think he's in a pretty interesting position now where obviously Josh and Jordan are already thinking about turning on Mark and Sam at some point. It's just a matter of if Jordan can get them on board to complete the shot. He has a number of singles that he can rely on if he really wants, really wants to take that shot as well. If he can expose the fact that there are two idols in the game, which again, he has knowledge of both of them. And I feel like he can really take that 
Bradshaw as well. And plus, we've seen him win enough immunities to where he could realistically get himself off the chopping block if it comes down to it. So I think there's a number of things going for Jordy, even if he is the biggest target on the board. But a thing going against him is obviously his position to where even though he has the potential to flip the singles, if Mark and Sam are able to hold them together, then he is the biggest target on the board. Will go home if he ever loses immunity. And beyond that, I think if he's able to get to the end, I think he has a decent shot of winning. However, with Mark and Sam being the main protagonist of the season, I find that pretty unlikely at this point. So because of that, I have Jordy here at number three. And now at number two, we have the same top two as last week, and it is the same order as well. We have Sam. Now, Sam's been getting a pretty interesting edit recently where he had, she's been getting quite a bit of negative content. I mean, this was a pretty bad first episode for her this past week where people were talking about getting rid of her at a point and I actually thought there was a shot that she could have been voted out here with obviously the purgatory twist being a way for her to get back into the game as well as Mark's edit being pretty quiet to where I felt like it was probably shielding him from Sam's blind side so I thought that was a possibility however by the end we saw that Jordy and KJ were the ones voted out so it seems like the couple's alliance held true but even beyond that she has been getting a lot of heat for this whole Jesse move and people have been talking about turning on her more so than Mark. Mind you, Mark's not entirely immune from this either, but it seems like most of the focus is on Sam. And I've talked about this before, but I think Sam is more likely to lose a jury vote if she were to get to the end with Mark than Mark you know, like losing against Sam. So I think those are all things going against her. And it wouldn't surprise me if she ultimately was voted out, or maybe she's a surprise boot in the next couple episodes. So I think there are a number of things going against Sam. However, she is the most likely winner out of anyone outside Mark or really anyone we've already talked about to this point she's the most complex and developed character up to this point it's just that not all that's been positive and there are enough faults there to where she could lose the game if she gets to the end so i think that's enough there to leave her at number two however outside the number one person i do think she's the most likely contender and at number one you all know who it is it is mark and again admittedly this wasn't the best week for mark i mean this was again a relatively quiet week for him where he barely gets any content in the first episode obviously that's not great and then in episode 18 he gets to talk about having the necklace and both idols you know talking about his next targets being Dave and Michelle and while he technically wants David to go out more I mean Michelle going out isn't the worst thing in the world and again I even in episode 17 where he wasn't um the most prominent I felt like there was a chance that there could have been a Sam blindside and that could have been just been a way to shield him obviously with Sam not going out it's probably more of a negative now but at the end of the day he is still the most likely winner contender in my eyes even with Jordy coming back in the game and directly going after him I feel like he is in a solid position I mean obviously there's the fact that Sam handed her him his idol so in order to hold on to so that if Sam were to go out that he would still have both idols that's something at least and again I feel like compared to Sam Mark has been portrayed on the whole more positively and probably more likely to win a jury vote if they were to get to the end together I feel like even with this being a quieter week for Mark this is still the top contender in my eyes and I don't think it really changes too much as there really isn't anyone else that can go up against him at this point so because of that I still have Mark here at number one. And there we go that will do it for this week's power rankings I know this was a lot shorter than usual but honestly there just wasn't that much new that happened this week as again it literally took three episodes to eliminate one person. A lot of the purgatory twist not only took up a lot of screen time but I felt like it also stifled the gameplay where I feel like if it wasn't for that that we would have seen the couples turn on each other by now but we'll just have to wait for that to happen down the road but like I said I am hoping the gameplay picks up to a degree but we'll have to see what happens and again this is Australian Survivor so I feel like the contenders are pretty well set at this point anyway but anyway that is the video if you like this content be sure to like and subscribe and again I cover other shows like Big Brother Canada Survivor 42 as well as this one so stay tuned for all that but for now, that's the video. See ya.